Today we're going to be raiding custom Magic the Gathering cards. We start off with Melek, a natural disaster. This is a red, black, blue, white, two generic, two, four, weird wizard. Weird, is it? Uh, legendary creature, instant and sorceries in your hand have overload. And the overload cost is equal to that. Ma that spells mana value plus four. Apologies, I forgot about the laws of physics. I didn't know Melek was so powerful. So all I have to do is play lightning. How does overload work? Each other than you or something? Or is that like, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So it's like if I deal something to an opponent, each other opponent gets hit. If I deal to a player, all other players get hit. Um, or all other targets. What if I hit lightning bolt to a target creature or player? So it has overload. It hits each other creature or player or play, no, any other target. So basically for five mana, I bolt everybody. I bold everything! Amazing. Uh, yeah, so is this... It's interesting to say the least. Like, you try to draw some cards. Everyone draws cards. So actually, that's pretty, pretty... I don't know. Is it broken? I don't think it's that broken. It is six mana as well. I like it. This is going to mess up some cards in hand. Is this only for you or everyone? Instant sorceries? No, it's just in your hand. So you have the power! The power, the strength, to basically soup up all your instants and sorceries. All right, next up, we've got the the murder. Is that like some sort of joke? Murder. Black, instant, destroy target. Merfolk creature. Oh, no. Why the merfolk? I kill like 20 goblins, and they act like it never happened. But when I kill one itty-bitty merfolk, that's right. That should be illegal. Get him! Who designed this card? They just made it to trigger me. I, uh, ah, uh, yes. Murder, a staple of magic. Absolutely. Yeah, now it makes sense. Now I get the joke. There's no, there's no laughing matter, all right? You know, the fish are already over, fi the, the seas are already overfished. The fish population's going low. We're gonna murder the rest of them? Get out of here. Stay off my merfolk. Okay, uh, we're gonna start with our super chats with Bacon Cat Bug with Fizzle. Remember, you can super chat and then donate cards. Uh, in my Discord, links to that in the description below. We're looking up Fizzle here. And I got it! And I'll look at- you gotta give me that. you gotta post the card with a name to it. Like, not on the card, a post in the post, and then I can look it up. Okay, Fizzle for an Azorius, instant. Target permanent you don't control gains protection from everything until end of turn, and you draw a card. So this is like a super veil of summer, if I understand this correctly. Oh, but it doesn't give you, uh, it doesn't make your cards uncounterable, does it? Yeah, target permanent you don't, hold on, and it's don't control gains protection from everything until end of turn. Why would you want to do that? Otherwise, I think this is pretty good. I mean, it's not gonna... It's not gonna do anything, I guess. Like, I mean, it's not, it doesn't benefit you. It's gotta be benefit someone else. This is like a weird group hug type of card. Can pump. No pump, no dump. Even the mightiest incarnations can falter. Their power dissipating into mere whispers of what could have been. Easily pass. Easy pass. Anti-infect? Target permit you don't control. Oh, heck! <laughs> that is a weird anti-infect card. You know, it's also anti-infect just killing the creature for one mana that also works i think it works better than even fizzle much better than fizzle back to the freebie section ancestral lotus what on earth is that supposed to mean it's a blue oh it's an instant since when did it like a lotus become instant speed target player draws three cards this doesn't even make any sense come on lotus don't draw cards they add mana each opponent creates a black lotus token. Okay, what the hell is even going on here? So, it's Ancestral Recall for me, or somebody else, and it's a black lotus for ev uh, everyone else? Is it broken? This is this is a funny card. Like, it's probably broken in one on in 60 card magic, but what about multiplayer? Like, you want to draw three cards? All right, I'll take a black lotus. Don't mind if I do. I'd love a dark ritual that I can play for any uh, col uh, for any colors. And then if you give, if you need the mana, like if you give someone else the three cards, everyone else gets a black lotus. 
So one way or another, someone's going to benefit from this. Yeah, Ancestral Recall, Black Lotus combined. They had a love child. And it's the Ancestral Lotus. I can almost get behind this card. It's... Reminds me of an offer you can't refuse. Where you get to counter a non-creature spell, but then that per the person who benef sorry got their card countered, they get two treasure tokens. I mean, this is just like, give everyone three treasure tokens and I draw three cards. I actually think this can backfire. You're using the strength of the Lotus to summon your ancestors. Oh, God. Or the, uh, the ancestors are... The Lotus is my ancestor? I'm gonna give this a pass! I like it! Player gains control of all artifacts. Well, they can just sacrifice in response, right? Then you get nothing. You get nothing at all. Super busted storm card. I got... You know what? I might be nuts. I might be nuts. I like this thing. Hell, they could print this. And I would have no qualms about it. Okay, I'm going to move on to the largest super chat from One Frame James Parallel e uh, Entity. We have Parallel Entity. Oops. Entity. Okay, we got a Black 2-2 Avatar. Already pretty pushed. Shadow, Lifelink, and Haste. What is going on here? Okay, so it's unblockable. You're going to gain life and SA. So basically, turn one, I've already smacked you for two, and I've gained two life. Okay, when parallel parallel enti entity can't attack or block unless you control a land that doesn't have a void counter on it. Unless, can't it, unless you... So, oh! One, no. Unless you control a land that doesn't... So, hold on, does it come into play with void counters? Whenever it attacks or blocks, put a void counter on target land you control that doesn't have a void counter on it. And lands you control have... Sorry, lands you control with void counters on them lose all abilities and have tap out a colorless. Ah, interesting. So, you only get one attack out of this thing? All of a sudden, it seems very underwhelming. Incredibly underwhelming. Does this literally attack once and then that's it and you gotta like sacrifice your land? Because it just permanently has this void counter on them. Hold on. Lands you control with void counters on them, lose all abilities and have tap, but it still has the void counter. That's it! But how do you get- well you get the first counter by attacking or blocking. I don't know what you're gonna block, it has shadow, this is like literally one other shadow. <laughs> you know, shadow creatures when they see another shadow creature. Hey, let's be buddies! Or, oh my god, someone can attack me. Attacks uh, until all lands have void counters. Oh, well, is that how it works? So for as long as I have... Whenever it attacks or blocks, put a void count... Oh no, it can't attack or block unless you control a land that... Oh, I get it. Okay, that's good. You got it. You got it, Coffin Buns. At least there's one person reading cards around here. Because it ain't gonna be me. So every single time you attack, so long as uh, so if so long as there's a single land out that doesn't have a void counter, then you're all good. Uh, I guess it's balanced in some weird way. Just keep playing lands, you get an attack for two and gain two life, and that's not, and it screws over your mana base. It's almost like waste landing everything. You get a few free attacks by fetching. Oh, that's good. Good point, old boy. That's tech. I like it. It's a cool card. That's unique design. For, for once, it has a lot of words on it, and it's not, like, ridiculously overpowered. There's actually some downside to that card. Okay, we got the Mortal Toll. Black, black, black sorcery. Target opponent pays five life. For what? Are you going to force them to pay five life? That's so weirdly worded. Even the unwilling must pay their dues in flesh. Pay for what? And the, here's the deal, if they can't, if their life total is at four or less, th this card actually does nothing to them. Because they can't pay five life, they only have four or less life uh, left. Deals five damage, but can't kill them if they are at four, yeah exactly, at four or less. Pay the troll toll, get him. The, the mortal toll, I guess it's okay. I have nothing against it really. Okay, next up, uh, we've got... Uh, remember, we're going to do... Oh, we have a batch, huh? Okay, so I will do batches uh, in the second half of the show. So we're going to move to Robert. Thank you very much for your super chat. Kai, the Jade Slayer. Kai, comma. Probably not that many Kais. 
The Jade Slayer. It is a green, red, black, two generic, four, five, spirit, ox, warrior. With that touch and ward. Uh, Kai must be blocked if able. Whenever a creature dealt, co dealt combat damage by Kai uh, this turn dies, exile it until Kai leaves the battlefield and create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a green artifact in addition to its other colors and types. Oh, I see. So if I attack with Kai, you block, I get your creature. I basically suck its soul for my own... Uh, for my own bidding. Everybody was kung fu fighting. I guess that's uh. I can't tell if this person knows kung fu. Need more information based on image. Fist as fast as light. Oh, you're oh you're just trolling around here. Okay. Uh, must be blocked with high attack and death touch. Oh hell no. Yeah, exactly. Oh it no, but it must be blocked if able. So make sure you attack with all your creatures. Get them all into the red zone. Otherwise, the Kai, the Jade Slayer, might be coming for you. And you're going to lose everything. Uh, yeah, the card as is. Oh, it doesn't work? Why would it not work? Kai must be blocked if able. Whenever, dealt com whenever a creature dealt combat damage by Kai, this turn dies. Exile it until Kai leaves the battlefield and create a token. Oh, I, wait, you're saying, like, it won't get exiled because it will die in combat? So it, like, needs to be, like, if it would take lethal damage, exile it instead or something like that? Anyway, otherwise, I think the idea works. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, next up, we've got a freebie section. The News Bearer. It's a beautiful X bird This is weird. Okay, so what, I can pay zero for a 2-2? It's flying. The value of X is 19 billion. I don't get it. Chirp. The value of X. So what? I have to pay 19 billion to get a 2-2 cre cre uh, creature out? Instructions unclear. I don't even know what this card does. I don't even know if I can cast it for one. It says the value of X is 19 billion. And when will I have... When will I even have 19 billion mana outside of uh, infinite mana? The news bearer? Is it tw supposed to represent Twitter? Maybe. Yeah, not, e not even a bear. <laughs> It's a bird. It's Twitter. The value. Oh my god. What an absolute joke. So Twitter used to be called X. Sorry. X used to be called Twitter. And I can't remember what valuation they put on it. I guess the value of X is 19 billion X. And here's the old Twitter bird. Yeah, it's an overpaid joke, I guess. Yeah, well... Yeah, that's what hap That's what happens. Isn't it supposed to be like 420 a share or something like that? He just, he just threw out this four. I'm gonna buy all the shares for 420. And then they said okay, and he's like, oh god, what have I done? And now he's got. And now he owns Twitter. Yeah, I I still call it Twitter myself. Calling it X is just weird. Very, very, very weird to me. Uh, okay, let's start moving with some. Alex Gibson, a normal card this time. Leyline of Artifice. Leyline of... A lot of Leylines here. Leyline of Artifice. It is a... Is it? Is it? Too generic. Enchantment. If, of course, if it's in your opening hand, you begin with it in the game, uh, on the battlefield. Uh, artifact creatures you control get plus two, plus two. It's not bad. And then for is it is it three generic target non creature artifact becomes a zero zero construct artifact creature until an, until uh, artifact creature until your next turn. Doesn't that just kill it? I mean, it would just kill it like directly on the spot. You would li you're just gonna turn. Oh, it's not until it's not even your creature. So you could target non creature artifacts. So you, oh, what you're doing is basically killing off people's non-creature artifacts is that what you're doing oh the ley line is an anthem damn it i missed that usually when i see the word construct it's like it also adds the clause uh has the ability like guess plus one plus one for each other artifact you control yeah okay so it's not gonna die here so what you have to do is turn your opponent's artifacts into creatures and then bounce your ley line of artifice back to hand and then they're all gonna be a goner yeah, so, oh, but it isn't only an anthem for things you control. There you go! 
Exactly. So it did. It does work. I will admit, I did not see how my interaction actually worked, but it does work. Poor Nikachu always ends spammed by chat for misreading card. Oh yeah. Only if you control. So yeah, it is still removal for the opponents. It's not, I'm not, I didn't say anything about killing our own creatures, or maybe I did. I'll have to look at my instant replay. Red doesn't make sense though. Red likes to destroy artifacts. Well, it will. <laughs> Technically, it will destroy the artifacts on the opponent's side of the board. Cool card. Don't know if it's good or bad though. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's terrible. All right, freebie section. The pep. Truffle Snuffler. Uh, it is a white, green, one generic, two, four, boar detective. When Pep Truffle Snuffler attacks, investigate. What is it like pigs can find mushrooms or, or truffles? Truffles are a type of mushroom. So it attacks and you investigate. Clues you control are food in addition to their other types and have pay to tap, sacrifice this artifact, you gain three life. I have I don't see anything wrong with this card. Turning your clues into food. Chow down, my fellow piglets. Uh, he may eat half the evidence, but he's got the spirits. All right, it's a banger. Flavor text as well. Yeah, it looks like an actual card. <laughs> eat the clues. No, that is a bad piglet. What are you doing? That's evidence. Oh, well. Next super chat from Bacon Catbug. Land tap. Land tax, not the Legends one. Well, you're actually, believe it or not, instant. I don't know you. So you re-mentioned not the Legends one. I still think you get instantly disqualified for exactly using the name of another card. I don't know if this would show up in Gatherer, not the Legends one. Okay, we have a white enchantment. Whenever an opponent puts a land onto the battlefield other than the first one they play each turn. If that player controls more lands than you, search your library for a planes card. If put onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Oh, so is this you put it your instead of uh didn't land tax put the cards into your hand, so this one's gonna put them into play? I guess that's okay. Well no, it's whenever an opponent puts a land onto the battlefield other than the first one they play each turn. If Oh, I see. If a per if a player puts an extra land in play, if that player controls more lands than you, search your library for a planes card and put onto the battlefield tab. Interesting. Italicized uh, italicized text is not part of the gameplay. Uh, not only is it not part of the game, well, it's not part of the gameplay, but we have a super old rule: you can't use the same name as a real car. Land tax. <laughs> Brawly shadow. Yeah, that's a way of getting around it. It's land tax. It's not anti-ramp. It's fair ramp. You want to ramp? Then we... You're not ramping. We're both ramping. You ramp for both of us. It's a fixed land tax. I don't even think there's anything wrong with this thing. I don't care who Elspeth sends. I'm not paying the taxes. I didn't even know Elspeth was a person to get the ta a tax collector. If the card name is land tax, not the Legends one, instead of land tax, then it's Zybers. Oh, God. It also, oh, it punishes the fetch lands. True story. Uh, because you, the fetch land that comes into play, that is your land per turn. And then the second land that comes onto the battlefield, well, it does not count as your land per turn because you already put a land in play that this turn. Okay, design is cool. Name is terrible. Okay, next up we've got Perry the Platypus. Never saw the cartoon, honestly. We have a green, red, one generic uh, legendary platypus. It's a 4-2 creature. It's relatively strong but whatever a platypus for a green sorcery critty one one green platypus creature token with shroud that's pretty good turn one basically like an untouchable one one creature then we have emerge parry the platypus has haste as long as it the emerge cost was paid whenever parry the platypus deals combat damage to an opponent investigates I don't think it's that strong. Okay, I think we can... This is a pass as well. I don't know how the Emerge is going to interact with the 1-1 Platypus. Because it has no casting cost, right? Doesn't Emerge, like, cut the cost of the, your card based on, like, the mana cost of the other card that you play? Something like that? I don't remember how Emerge works exactly. 
Seems like a good boggle replacement. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, you basically have a boggle in addition to a relatively regular creature. Wait, shroud, never mind. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, no shroud, so, like, no putting your auras on your own creature. It don't work that way. All right, next super chat. We'll take from Brawly Shadow, Alice False Idol. Beautiful card. Doesn't look like anything from Alice in Wonderland, though, if that's the uh, the origin story. We have a blue-white, two generic Alice False Idol. It's a 3-3 creature. Uh, Incarnation Noble. Now it's got Monstrosity 3 for Esper colors. I don't know what the hell that's all about. When it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until Alice leaves the battlefield. It can't attack or block. That is weird. So it is some sort of... What's that pirate? There's a pirate enters the battlefield, you steal your, you exile someone's creature, but it can also attack and block, unlike Alice False Idol. At the beginning of your end step, if Alice is monstrous, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. That is just, oh yeah, host, I was thinking of Hostage Taker. That's what I was thinking of. So this card, I don't get it. So it's an Oblivion Ring that I can't attack with, but it gets monstrous. As far as I'm concerned, I can still not attack with it. It can't attack or block. Yeah, I was thinking of Hostage Taker. Alright, this is fine. I can, I, I, so, and then when we Monstrous it, it just blinks another card. Seems incredibly underwhelming, to be honest. It can attack the thing to take. The thing to take can't. Well, of course it can't attack. Did you exile it? Oh, you, oh, sorry, you didn't exile it, you gained control of it. I was thinking of Hostage Shake where it exiles. Ah, okay. The creature stolen can't attack or block. I need more coffee. You know, everyone, like, like tunes out of the show because I can't read these cards properly in the first half, and then I, I sharpen up in the last half, but everyone's gone at that point. All right. And then it can attack and block. If you blink it, wouldn't it go back to your opponent's side of the board? Wouldn't, isn't that how it works? You can exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under... Oh, I see. It, it specifically says, blink the card, and it comes back to you. Not under its owner's control. Under your control. And then it should say it goes back into your deck. Or some, some, some nonsense like that. Okay, freebie section. Faded Damnation. We have for six mana, a sorcery. Destroy all non-land permanents. But also it can be... Sus this is so weird. For two mana, it's got suspend four. For three mana, it's got suspend three. For four mana, it says suspend four, uh, suspend two. And then for five mana, it says it has suspend one. Uh, this is a very humorous card. Because basically, okay, you can cast this like at any point of your curve. And by turn six, you're going to destroy all non-land permanents. Just a matter of waiting it out to figure for it to you know for the bomb to tick off so you just pick yeah you just pick the timer or you surprise them all at once on turn six maybe you had it in your hand after all and you just didn't want it. it's but like i guess what it is is like if you have nothing to do on the particular turn that you're on just like play this thing make sure you play with completely indestructible cards x could be used in suspend cost to remove some counters Maybe. Maybe. Suspend and phase out before it goes off. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. Teferi's protection. So, so long, suckers. There has to be a more elegant way to implement that. I think it's okay. It's pretty clear. You can you can see the strategy with this. The strategy with this card's design. It's, per, it's a perfectly useful card. Okay. Uh, Next super chat we'll take from... bunch of okay i'll take one from sleazy nikolai have another card oh thank you very much sleazy i appreciate it we got another one from the freebie section akira misguided hero it is a black white blue one generic three three incarnation noble what's with the incarnation nobles that's a very popular creature type all of a sudden vehicle spells you cast cost two less to cast vehicles crewed by akira have hexproof and haste until end of turn. 
Whenever a Akira misguided hero crews a vehicle, you may pay two. If you do, untap Akira. Okay, sure. For the vehicle players, in Esper. I don't know why this knight in shining armor is uh, crewing vehicles. I, that is just such a weird image to see. This person in full body, full body armor, getting behind the wheel, turning on the ignition, and then driving off. That's a sight you don't see very often. Okay. Next freebie card. Time walk like an Egyptian. We have a blue one generic sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice a desert or pay blue three generic. And deserts are coming back in the, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. They're bringing out a bunch of new desert cards. So we can sacrifice all of them. Take an extra turn after this one. Exile time walk like an Egyptian. I like it. So basically, it's just two mana, sack a land. It's, it's actually broken, right? I think this is this is sort of a broken card. Because if you get an extra turn, you're at least going to replace the land you have anyway. The only... So the deal is, if it's if you play this on turn two, it's not strong. His initial cost to cast this spell set. Okay, so you can pay it. You can play it for six mana. Which sucks, actually. I don't know why you'd want to do that at that point. Uh, I think this card is stronger if you're just paying it for two and sacking one of your deserts. So it's just the deal is it's not good to play early on in the game uh, because you'll sack your land, you'll get an extra turn, you get an extra land drop, but then what do you do? You accomplish. Whereas like early on in the game, time walk can represent could just be an explore. Early in the game, it's explore. Late in the game, it's an absolute busted bomb. So this card might be a little bit more fair. But still, turn six, two mana, get an extra turn. Also, you have to build your deck around deserts, or your deck sucks. Play four of these and a lot of deserts. Come the deserts, you idiots! Come the desert! Okay, with that, um, I actually think this is somewhat fair. Fair enough, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely more fa fair than Time Walk. Well, you still have to play the deserts, right? The deserts suck. <laughs> Imagine playing, and you can only have like one per desert in your commander deck. And what if you don't have one in play? Then you are forced to pay six mana for this thing. And there's no other way around it. I like it. Okay, next up, let's take a look at, I guess we'll, we'll get another bacon cat bug special here. Uh, Null Zone Engine. Null Zone. Null Zone Engine is a two mana artifact. As long as Null Zone Engine is untapped, tapped artifacts lose all abilities. This can be broken. Tapped artifacts lose all abilities. Oh no, no, but it's only tapped artifacts. How does this work? How is this supposed to work actually? As long as this thing's untapped, tapped artifacts lose all abilities. What is going on here? We're not even close to done here. Oh, did I mix them up? I mixed my musics up. Okay, music's fixed. Soul ring. I don't even know. Does it even counter the soul ring? You activate the ability by tapping it, but then you get the ability. It just prevents, like, Grim Monolith from ever getting untapped, as far as I'm concerned. It prevents Grim Monolith, prevents, um, the other, all the monoliths, really. Prevents, what's it called? Uh, Mana Vault. Soul Ring wouldn't have a tap ability. Tapped artifacts lose all abilities. But it's it's tapped. You have to tap the artifact and you get the ability. You get it anyway. So it, it is like a really narrow card. It's like literally, oh, but if you can tap their artifacts as well, it might be fine. Like let's say there's Ensnaring Bridge on the battlefield or Meek Stone. You could then tap those artifacts and all of a sudden they're tapped and you lose the abilities. Okay, there's some niche abilities to this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Grim Monolith would would lose, doesn't untap. That's a conundrum. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it would lose the doesn't untap part, but at the same time, so it would untap. This actually helps Grim Monolith. That's so bizarre. I don't get it. Winter Orb breaks this, does it? It would be a very fun way of playing Magic the Gathering with this card. 
All right, you love uh, fake Magic the Gathering cards, but how loyal are you to the real Magic the Gathering cards? Because we love them here at Magic the Gathering at FusionGamingOnline.com. Get your Fallout Commander decks while they're hot. Also, uh, oh yeah, the Fusion Open's coming out April 27th to 28th. Modern on Saturday, also Pioneer on Sunday, plus tons of Commander side events. The Outlaws of Thunder Junction spoilers are being spoiled. They're leaking. We find out we're learning about new deserts. We got a two mana Jace Planeswalker. When you get the, when you see the cards that inspire you, buy them first at FusionGamingOnline.com. And don't forget to use coupon code Nikitra at checkout for an additional 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. Before you know to buy those cards, you may want to test the deck out when you're renting all of them. And then if the deck works out to your, your perfect satisfaction, you then go buy into those cards at... Uh, at any store you want, <laughs> preferably FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget to use, when you're renting on Magic Online, use coupon code Nikachu underscore ZUE for 10% off your first two months. The best way to play Magic Online is by renting the decks, especially if you like to play a lot of decks at once. And back to our custom Magic the Gathering cards. All right, uh, where am I here? Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, Concert Hall. This is a land. Oh, no, this is okay. This is the last freebie of the day. So we have so many super chats. Gotta get through all the super chats. Concert Hall, a land. Enters the battlefield tapped. Barred creatures you control have riot. Tap, tap, and untap bard you control. Add black, green, or blue. Oh, this card is so, like, incredibly underwhelming. Like, it's a card. Comes with, is this... It's like a bad triome, really. Bard creatures of control have Riot. <laughs> Who's playing Bard? Who's playing Bard Kindred around here? Not me, that's for sure. Seems strong. <laughs> it just seems strong for... Oh, yeah. It's like... Is there a deck for any... Is there is there a card built specifically for any creature type? And then the, the Shapeshifter players are like, Is this a Shapeshifter card? Looking at that butterfly. Doesn't need to enter tapped, at least. What do you mean? It has to enter the battlefield tapped. But bards like red. There are no black bards, I think. Not it. Well, unless you count the shapeshifters. Gotta count the shapeshifters. Pass it is. All right. It's now time for a million unlimited super chats. Let's start with some of the, the series from Zarathur. My first batch of Rune Terra. All right. Trying to borrow <coughs> cards, characters from Lord of the Rings. Oh, sorry, no, Legends of Rune Terra. Uh, to see if they Zyber or not on uh, in Magic: The Gathering. Well, let's take a look. Okay, we got Caitlyn Piltover Sheriff. Uh, this is a white, blue, one generic, 3-3 three, three human detective with first strike. When Caitlyn Piltover Sheriff deals combat damage, activated abilities of artifacts you control cost one less to activate uh, until end of turn. If you control no clues, investigate. Clues you control have... <laughs> Azorius, one generic, sacrifice this artifact, detain target creature. That's pretty cool at the very end of that. I like that. I like that we're turning cre like clues into effectively like removal in some way. Hold on. I don't know. Pilto, isn't that like a League of Legends thing? Is Rune Terra and League of Legends the same thing? I don't know the lore between either of those games very well. But I'm pretty sure Piltover sounds very, very familiar. Okay, this has to be Lee. Uh, okay, V, Piltover Enforcer. We have a white, white, three generic, two, six, human soldier detective with Provoke. Whenever you draw a card, V, Piltover Enforcer gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. That could be, that could be nuts. Imagine. That's absolutely busted. So whenever you draw a card, this thing becomes bonkers. Imagine this brainstorm, plus six, plus zero. 
be completely insane. Whenever V pill, uh, deals 10 combat damage or more while attacking, exile target non-land permanent uh, target opponent controls. V feels very Boros to you? No, it's it's clearly blue-white around here. Yeah, basically, LOL Brainstorm. Or Wheel of Fortune, yeah. Wheel of Fortune, gain uh, plus 14, plus zero. Okay, this card might be strong. I don't know, maybe plus one, plus, like, it's it's worse than Prowess. It's like, it is way stronger than Prowess, in my opinion. Far, far stronger. Maybe plus one, plus zero until end of turn is good enough. Yeah, we enter the... <laughs> we enter the infinite. Draw your entire deck. And then uh, V, Piltover Enforcer, is like an all-powerful god. I don't even remember what Provoke does. Okay, I'm going to say that this card is a little busted. Just a little busted. And then we have Seraphine, Youthful Songstress. For three mana, we have a one for human bard. More bards around here. When Seraphine, Youthful Songstress enters, uh, return an instant or sorcery card with mana value of two or less from your graveyard to your hand, then discard a card. That's totally fine. Whenever you play an instant or sorcery spell with mana value two or less, if it doesn't share a name with a card in your graveyard or exile, copy it. You may choose new targets for that copy. Okay, that's cool. I think that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of value here. Also extra good in Commander because you'll have nothing that uh, copies. There shouldn't ever be another copy of it in your graveyard. That's not how Commander works around here. It's one of for days. Okay, next Super Chat. Let's take from Miyuki. Here's three lands plus one on Reddit. Why are you do Okay, I'm going to give you the... Miyuki, you're going to get this sound effect. Don't have Discord. Well, that's not a me problem. Okay, uh, but I am prepared for you. Three unusual lands for flavor. Three unusual lands. Please work the first time around. A little bit of loading. Come on, Reddit. Reddit having a heart attack right now. There we go. Three unusual lands for flavor. Okay. It's more flavor text than text. Holo Geon's Curious Forest Land. Uh, tap, discard a creature from your hand and pay three life. That's a lot of life. Add mana equal to half the discarded creature's mana value rounded up. Split between black and green of your choice. This is insane. So you just discard something enormous. And get like a billion mana. Yeah, 10 mana on turn one. What can go wrong? Or it's like, it's half the mana, right? Uh, add mana equal to half the... So if I discard Sign of Draco, I get like six... I get eight mana out of that. There's so many combo decks that play with gigantic creatures. You just basically break the game in half over this one card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it beats you for three. Balance. Ship it. Okay, what is the flavor text? Uh, this land is strange and worthless. Well, pss, worthless to some, I guess. But very worthful for combo players. You cannot directly tap it for mana, but sacrificing creatures, you don't even, you don't even sacking a creature, discarding it. If you sack the creature, that'd be a completely different story. So the unusual sphere at its very center nets you black and green mana. If only. What this card literally does, it's like you take a book and you throw it into the fire and boom, you get a billion mana. Uh, oh, there's more cards. Hold on. Okay, the cards are here. Okay, Chaotic Passage of Izzeret. It's a land. You can add... This is really weird. Why would we... You could add... Oh, you can either... Huh? So you can add Rakdos, Gruul, or... Golgari, then you lose two life. What is even the point of wording it like that? Wouldn't it just be like add red, green, or black? That's so strange. You're adding specifically the hybrids. And you can choose either one of them to add to your mana pool. Tap, return target land you control to your hand, then discard a card from your hand. Oh, that's cool! Basically turning your lands into fuel. I could get behind that. That's pretty cool. This is, a, this is a neat land. This land is too volatile and cursed for my liking. It feels as if you are being torn apart and chewed on whenever you tap mana. I like that. 
you have to use it as those hybrids? I don't even know if it would work like that. Would the rules work like that? So you have to tap and use the hybrid colors? Yeah, I don't even think you can add hybrid. It's like you're just adding... Yeah, that's true. I don't think I've ever seen on a card once you add hybrid. You pay hybrid because you can choose either one or the other. It doesn't work like that. There's a rule that makes it not work. Okay, we're just gonna... I'll trust you on that. I've never seen the design like this before. It would probably... It would honestly be fine if it's just, you know, add red, black, or green. You lose two life. This is a far more balanced and much more interesting card than the first one. Lost City of Adenia. Uh, Adenia. It's a legendary land. Pay one, tap. Add white, blue, green, or colorless. So it's a filter land. Tap, remove target creature you control from play. Uh, you may then pay one to add white, white, blue, blue, green, green, or colorless, colorless. Also a neat card. See, that no, these, were, these were balanced. These were balanced actually quite well. Nature has, a recla has reclaimed this magnificent city from those who lived within its walls. No one knows what caused its denizens to flee, but it is my job to find out. You effectively are exchanging permanence in play for some other resource, and I think that's what makes it balanced. Okay, and then we have Dobrin, Dobra, Dobrinja Nikitic Nastasia. Sounds very Russian to me. We have a colorless snow snow, three generic, three loyalty, giant hero. Dobrinja Nik Niki I should just say Nastasia can attack and block as if she is a creature. Her base power and toughness is equal to seven to seven five. Oh god. Plus one. Uh also if she takes damage from blocking, does she lose loyalty? Plus one. And you also have to pay two? Can only be used once per turn. Uh Natasia gains flying and has plus three plus five until uh the end of the next turn. Also, minus one, pay two, can only be used once per turn. Uh, Nata Nastasia gains shroud and deals double damage to dragons until the end of the next turn. That's weird. No nose or mouth? No nose or mouth. You have to get really... There's actually a nose, too. Can we zoom in? I can't get close enough. That's not dust on my screen, right? No, it's not. I see, I see the nose. It's real. Whoops. Here yeah, we're back. So you get, it's just a, it's a tiny uh, anime nose. All right, you gotta look really closely. Um. Sure, I'll just say this is okay. I don't know if this is an okay creature or not. I mean, you can bolt the thing, and it will die. If it, if you bolt a actually, this is a good question. If I bolt a planeswalker that is a seven five creature, does it go to the graveyard? Is there a rule that says, like, when a Planeswalker has zero loyalty, it dies? Uh, I don't know if that's true. I think you actually have to kill this thing. So it's literally a 6-mana 7-5 that can get buffed up. Loyalties are once per turn anyways. Yeah, it is. Wording is really off. And also, what if you have no 2-mana? I guess you can still go plus 1 and not pay the 2. And then you just don't get the whole ability. Just play the plus 1. That's why Gideon prevents damage, it would die. Oh, interesting. Oh, did they oh they specifically gave a special wording to Gideon? Yes, I think it would die to zero loyalty. Alright. It'd be dead. That's fine with me. Alright, next up. Mega Banani with the Lady Rhyme. Lady Banani. Okay, we got Lady Rhyme. It is a... Why is it split like this? Blue, green, blue. Is this an AI-generated card? Only the AI organizes casting costs like this. Alright, so 1-1 one, one Elemental Spirit. When Lady Rhyme enters the battlefield, empty your mana pool and put twice X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, where X is the amount of mana removed this way. Oh, that's interesting. So you float a bunch of mana, get it sucked out by your Lady Rhyme, and boom. Convert into counters. If Lady Rhyme's power is 15 or greater, it gains trample, and when this card would leave the battlefield and isn't sacrificed, instead it doesn't. Huh? 
I don't think I caught that the first time around. If the power is 15 or greater, it gains trample, and when this card would leave the battlefield and isn't sacrificed, instead it doesn't. What is the whole... If it would leave the battlefield... So if it's saying it, if you sacrifice it, it's gone. But if it would leave the battlefield through exile, through dying by any other means, it, uh, it just doesn't. When singing to a crescent moon, the lady gives the goddess's boom. Why not just X? Well, X is the amount of mana removed this way. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's like a weird way of saying just paying X. Well, the difference, I guess, is that... Let's say someone tries... Let's say you float 15 mana. If someone plays Mana Leak, you could pay 3 with that 15 mana. And then this thing would only get, like, plus 12, plus 12, right? Uh, whereas if you have to pay, if you play a kicker of 15, it could get countered by Mana Leak, by, um, those sort of counter spells, anyhow. Mana Tithe, so I'm gonna get Mana Tithe, your Lady Rhyme, so it's, it's interesting. So, Pseudo Immortality, well, you can make your, your opponent sacrifice the thing. And it's obviously not gonna be good early in the game, it's just gonna be a 1-1 creature. Well, I guess it's just gonna be interesting. Actually, isn't it just like a 1-1 completely indestructible creature? Actually, okay, I have another question. Let's say you play this for three. It's a 1-1, one, one, and your opponent plays, like, Plague Engineer. Is it, like, just a 0-0 zero, zero on the battlefield? Or is the game just constantly jarred up at a state-based effect? If you cheat this in play, you still empty the mana pool. Yeah, you still have to empty your mana pool. Uh, no, but it's only when it enters the battlefield. So after it resolves, right? Needs 15 poor... Oh, power? Somehow, I want to say, like, this card just doesn't work with the rules, but maybe I'm wrong. So if the card would leave the battlefield and isn't sacrificed... Do you know, I think it j makes more... S no, it, it just doesn't. Zero, zero qualifies in that sacrifice mechanics? Maybe? I don't know. I think it just dies at this point. And if the power is 15... Oh, it needs to be 50. Oh, that's right. It's immortal at 15. Okay, cool. So if the power is 15 or greater, so it'll be clear. Okay, so what if there are 15 Plague Engineers? All on Elemental. Then what happens? Sorry, not 15. 16. We need 16. 16 Plague Engineers. And Engineered Plagues are in play. Okay, whatever. It's an interesting thought experiment. Okay, next up, we've got, we'll get one from Majra, one of the greatest donators to this show of all time. Uh, with, I have a cool wolf deck to show this time. Part one of La Lovesque. You love your series. Part one of La Lovesque. I'm sure we're going to see three parts to this series today. Uh, all right, we got Mats Matsuyo Aramaki. It's a four mana five loyalty. This is a squirrel or something. Matsuyo. Whenever a creature you control triggers an ability during combat, it triggers an additional time. Pay zero until in a turn. Uh, Aramaki becomes a five five wolf warrior with first strike, mentor, and indestructible. It's still a planeswalker. When a creature damaged by Matsuyo dies, put a loyalty counter on Matsuyo equal to that creature's toughness. Alright, so don't be blocking this thing. Pay three. Destroy up to two target creatures with flying, creature artifact, or creature enchantment. Draw that many cards. Okay, that is busted. The last... It was actually fine up until the last part. You literally made a card. It's like four mana, blow up two car, two creatures... And then draw a billion cards off of it. It doesn't even specify what kind of enchantment. Like, if your opponent has, like, an eight-mana enchantment, you're just, like... Even one creature, I think, would be pretty brutal. Hold on, that's a plus ability! Is that even a minus? That's not even a minus ability. That's a plus ability. That's completely busted. Majra has single-handedly funded Nikachu's coffee addiction since 2017. I guess so. Only hits flying creatures, artifact creatures, or enchantment... Oh, it does it say enchantment creatures? Artifact creatures, there's a lot of them. Flying creatures, there's a lot of them. 
Okay, creature enchantment. I didn't read that part. I still think this card is very, very insanely strong. Yeah, and also it should be a minus ability in my opinion. It should be minus. And also I think, you know what? I'd be fine with it being a minus and you don't draw cards. That would probably make it fair. Okay, Yildris, the general. Three mana for a 3-3 three, three warrior. Sorry, wolf, warrior, shaman. First strike, ward two. Tokens you control have wither. Other wolf you control get gain plus one, plus one. This is pretty pushed. This is insane, actually. It's insanely pushed, but it's, it's fair compared to the first card. Liu, the naturalist. A six mana, five, five, wolf, warrior, shaman. Affinity for enchantments. Tokens you control have reach. Aura attached on wolf creatures you control have Umbra armor. <laughs> Finally, we're making like auras remotely good. That actually is a pretty good card. I think a lot of people. I think this card would Zyber in a lot of people's eyes. Affinity for enchantments. Tokens have. Why the tokens on re having reach? I don't know what that has to do with anything. That's like just a random. Why does the wolf have reach? For some random reason. And I'm assuming the tokens are mostly wolves uh, at this point. What's an Umbra armor? If a creature would be destroyed, you remove the aura from the creature instead, and it doesn't die. It's like regeneration, basically. Oh, I think, oh, maybe, is this supposed to be totem armor and Umbra armor? Umbra armor, there's like Umbra something was one of them. I mean, maybe it's supposed to be called totem armor. Okay, Matt Plea, the philosopher, a four mana, four, four wolf. Whenever a modified creature attacks uh, an opponent, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Whenever a modified creature attacks you, you can attach an aura from your hand to the target creature and, and or attach an equipment you control to target creature. That's probably really niche and narrow, so I think it's fine. Well, often some unmodified creature is going to come after you. Aspirant Hoko of Laval... Laval... Lalovesk. For two mana, two two wolf shaman, uh, life link gains plus one plus one and provoke as long as it's modified. Uh, aspirant Hoko of we'll just call it at the aspirant. Whenever it dies, you return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with enchant creature and gains whenever enchant creature deals combat damage. Uh, aspirant deals that much damage to that creature. That is just weird. Sure, good enough. This card is busted. Change that card. That's for sure. Most totem armors have Umbra in their names? Ah, I see. So it just should be called as totem armor. Totem armor would be clean or a, cl a much cleaner way of calling it. Calling it that. Uh, well, we have so many cards. Next one from Bacon Catbug. Red Scry at Night. Wizard's Delight. What the hell is this? Why Red Call us snow. Don't we start with at least X? Sorcery. Scry Y. Then flip Y coins. Draw a card for each coin that comes up heads. Then discard a card for each coin that comes up tails. Y is not X by default. There's no reason to have Y. You start with X. Oh, because you're trying to scry? Oh, I get it. Look at this. Snow. S. Call us C. Red. R. And then Y. Why? Because we're scrying. Okay, sure. You want you want to flip coins? You got it. Weird card. Next super chat coming from who hasn't got it yet? Steve Cooper. Okay, we got uh, CC Uncard. Two versions on the Discord. Second colorless one. Just scroll down a bit. Okay, I'll take your word for it. So we'll go straight here. CC Uncard version 3. Uh, oh, sorry. Custom Card Generator. Woober Colorless 1 Generic for a Legendary Enchantment Artifact. Cruise Dilemma X. Create a custom magic card with mana value X or less than each opponent votes for it. Zybers or Danger? If it's Zybers, if Zybers gets more votes, you put it into your hand. If Danger gets more votes, uh, pu then put it into the absolutely removed from the freaking game forever zone. This is a funny card. So basically, you can create cards through the custom card generator. If people like it, you get to play it. If you don't, you get nothing. Okay, six mana and a colorless for the custom card generator. This is an in this is an artifact. 
Cruise Dilemma. X, create a custom magic card with mana value X or less. Then each opponent votes for it's Zybers or a Danger. If it's Zybers, gets more votes. Put in your hand. If a Danger gets more votes, it's put back into the Gone Forever zone. Cool cards. I think these are both playable. Funny card. Yeah, it's the same, just colorless. I think both of them are fine. The, the colorless one could obviously be played in any deck, though. Okay, next up, we'll take a look at... Let's take one from Luke! Uh, what do you got for us, Luke? Uh, Eguard Volachia. You people have these card names I can't pronounce. Thorn King! Okay, this is a human noble, a 4-4 creature. Fear, ward, pay 5 life. All creatures get minus 1, minus 1. So, including uh, the Thorn King. So, it's a 3-3. Three, three. When you guard Valetia attacks, all, <laughs> comma, all creatures defending player control, I guess defending control. Is it like all opponents' creatures get minus 1, minus 1? Or defending player controls get minus 1, minus 1? Alternatively, you can word this. When when it attacks, all creatures defending control get like minus one, minus one. I'm assuming it's like all defending creatures that you're attacking the, from the player that you're attacking get minus one, minus one. The King of Thorns, Ugard Valachia, was the strongest emperor of Valachian history. Totally fine. Yeah, permanent debuff on attack. Oh yeah, it's not even until end of turn. So everyone's get minus one, minus one. You attack again, it gets minus one, minus one again. It should say something probably like it gets each creature gets like a minus one, minus one counter. There, oh, there's supposed to be an until end of turn somewhere. Oh, it's probably there. Okay, so it gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Totally fine. I think I think it's an, a neat card anyway. If for five mana, uh, this is like one of the more fair looking cards. And remember, it is a three three creature after all. Okay, next up, let's take a look at... We'll go through another Bacon Cat Bug, since like we have a billion of them to get through. Boros Bastion! This is a one mana Fortification Artifact. When, whenever Fortified Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional red or white. Totally fair! So it's like, it's like a slow, what's it called, Utopia Sprawl. For everyone who doesn't know, fortification is like, it's like equipment for lands. So you play this for one mana, you fortify for two, put on the land, and all of a sudden, if you're, the land is tapped for anything, uh, you add an additional red or a white. <laughs> Bacon Cat Bug is a card creating machine. Well, so, no, I'm t I think, I think there's a big, I think uh, Majra is actually the king of creating cards. This guy makes like a hundred cards a week. I'm just limiting. I'm just limiting down to 15. Corbinic likes this card. It adds based on how many fortifications are in play. Oh, really? It adds uh, whenever fortified whenever fortified land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional. Oh, okay, interesting. True story. True story. Okay, next up. Let's go look at another one from Mega Banani. We got Ami the Counselor. Ami, am I right? We need more counselors in the multiverse. Okay, we have a black, white, 2 2 Seder Advisor. When Ami enters the battlefield, if there are no other untapped creatures called Ami, the counselor on the battlefield, return it to your hand. Uh, if there are no other untapped creatures called Ami, so there can be tapped ones. So I have to return it back to my hand, increase your knowledge count by one. Put a knowledge counter on yourself. Your knowledge count is equal to the knowledge counters on yourself. Okay. I am so knowledgeable. I am a smarty pants. Um, but next up, then create a non-legendary token copy of Ami with... Uh, Without this ability. That's a bit weird. When Ami enters the battlefield... Oh, sorry, Ami enters the battlefield with a number of plus one, plus one counters equal to your knowledge count. So what it is, is like, okay, I play this card, I get a knowledge counter, I get a creature, a token, that's non-legendary, that gets increasingly bigger. It's a grizzly bear that gets bigger over time. So the first grizzly bear is like, what, a 3-3? Three, three? 
Second one becomes a 4-4, then a 5-5, then a 6-6. So you just have perpetual vanilla creatures. It's an interesting idea. It might be broken one-on-one. -on -one. It might be super broken. You start off... Because, like, there's no cost to it, right? You just immediately get it. You For two mana, you get a 3-3. Three, three, even though it's, like... Actually, this actually might be broken. It break one-on-one -on -one games. I think everyone would play this. You can cast... Yeah, I know. You just cast it for eternity. So you'd have to... Like, when Heirs the Baffled, you have to exile it or discard it from somebody's hand. Okay, take it back. This is actually absolutely broken. You get the two... So, turn two, I get a 3-3. Three, three. Turn three, I get a 4-4. Four, four. Turn five, when I have four lands in play... Sorry, turn four, when I have four lands in play, I get a 5-5, five, five, then a 6-6 six, six on the same turn. You just wait for the token to die and keep casting it very broken. You don't even wait for the... It's a non-legendary creature, right? And you just keep... Just make sure that they're tapped and it keeps getting bounced back to your hand. Because it has to be untapped? If there are no untapped creatures called Ami, the scent return it to your hand. That's the point. So you just attack with your creatures every single turn. Is this somewhat similar to Slime Against Humanity? I'm not familiar with that card. Yeah, you just keep tapping them. Okay, I take it back. This was a very interesting... I don't know how you balance this. Like, I see the idea. Probably the way you balance this is that you don't... They don't get bigger. It's just like... You play it, you get a 2-2. It goes back to your hand and you can perpetually keep making 2-2s. Two that would still be pretty strong as word it actually gets just busted. It's actually just broken. Maybe it's fair for commander. Uh, it would be really... So fair, pro probably fair for commander. Like not broken as no other... It's like just a bunch of vanilla beaters. Uh, supremely broken and one-on-one -on -one magic. It's like another Lurus or something. Okay. So I'll I'll just say that. So it is fine for Commander. We'll let it we'll let it live in Commander world. Uh, Tavishel, Mao to veteran. What's this all about? You get for two bucks. You get one card. Okay, Mao to Veteran. That is the name of the card. We got white. We got for Naya Colors a 2 2 Cat Warrior. When there's the battlefield, promote it three times. Congratulations, Mao to Veteran. You are promoted. Getting a new salary. We'll make sure you have extra vacation time. Not to mention, you know, you get at least uh, you get 10 extra sick days a year. We're going to increase your pension by this much money. Okay, what does it actually do? To promote, promote a creature, put a first strike counter, a haste counter, a vigilance counter, or a plus one, plus one counter on it. But what about my salary? I thought I was getting promoted three times. Oh no, like, the, all they gave me were these stinking counters. I don't get, like, so what's the point of it? Why can't it just, like, have these abilities in the first place? It seems, it, I mean, like, it's totally fair, but you could also have worded it. It's just a 3-3 three, three with a haste, with, that has haste, vigilance, and first strike. Um, I don't understand the counter gimmick of it. I guess you can proliferate the plus one, plus one counter, I guess? Something you could do? Make it so you pay mana to attack with each creature. Oh, oh, you're talking about the last card? Probably. You can choose to have a vanilla 5-5-2. Five, five, oh, oh, to promote a creature, put a first strike counter, a haste counter, a vigilance counter, or a plus one plus one, or a plus one plus one counter on it. Oh, oh, the idea is you could have X number of plus one plus one counters. Oh, you have to choose among all. Ah, you choose. Multiple choice. Don't choose wrong. What do I want? Do I need the plus one plus one counters? Or do I need haste? Or maybe I need first strike. Or perhaps I'd like to attack while being able to defend with vigilance. So many options, so little time. All right, cool. Well designed. Uh, maybe it needs to be worded better. To promote a creature, choose like one or more. Like choose one or more three. I don't know how to word it. Maybe, maybe it's worded properly in the first place. Maybe it's worded properly in the first place. Okay, next up, let's take a look at... Let's go to another bacon cat bug. 
Echo Dual Lands. Inspired by a comment on Reddit. Uh, I'm gonna. So yeah, we're just gonna look at one of them then. What is okay? So it's basically an I. It's a swamp. Um, that you can fetch. Okay, it's a, sorry. It's an underground sea that you can fetch out because everything's the same. Echo at the beginning of your upkeep. If this came in, I uh, came in under your control at the beginning of your last upkeep. Sack it unless you pay its echo cost. Interesting. Cool. Totally fair. Hundred percent. Nothing wrong with this card. I mean, uh, I don't even know if people want to play this card. Who wants to fetch out lands that you have to pay an echo for? Ugh. Okay, let's take a look at the series of Brawly Shadow. Akira, Misguided Hero. Wasn't expecting uh, it to be in the freebies. Oh, did you get it by accident? Akira, Misguided Hero. But this is the newer version. For context, he's an evil Power Ranger. Well, why did you just submit it recently? All right, so this is an evil Power Ranger. Go, go, pow go, go, Akira, misguided hero. Uh, okay, so this is cheaper at four mana. It's a three, three, Incarnation Noble. Vehicle spells you cost, ca sorry, you cast cost two less to cast. And whenever it crews a vehicle, that vehicle gains Hexproof and Haste until in a turn. Then you can pay two, and if you do, untap Akira. Totally fine. Both are good. Both work perfectly as I guess they wanted to. Raphael says, if the OG dual lands are fair, a duel with a downside is also fair. Exactly. Actually, there are some people who argue that the original dual lands are not fair. Hence why fetch, uh, sorry, shock lands are the fixed version of dual lands. I don't agree with them. <laughs> oh, what, what was this other comment? You can pay the echo. It can pay its own echo cost. Eric says it can pay its own echo cost, which is kind of unfair. Oh, but it taxes itself. It's like a, it's like a land that comes into the battlefield tap. But you can also tap it for mana immediately that turn. That's the point. So you get the mana up front. Pay. It's a buy now, pay later scheme with those lands. The buy now, pay. See, buy now, pay later. So you buy now, next turn you pay later. In some weird in uh some weird world. Okay, next up. Uh let's take let's get one another one from Majra. I will not continue the wolf deck at this moment. Oh really? Uh so you'll see my see the deck by patch of five next time. Meanwhile, I have a single card from an unrelated deck, the janitor. Gonna attack with a plunger or something. The custodian. You paid 10 euros for this one card? I mean, thank you very much. Uh, we have black, white, Orzov for the 2 2 human cleric citizen uh, with Bushido 2 soulbound. As long as the janitor is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has ward 2. And gets plus one plus one for each creature paired with it. If a paired creature is a cleric, the janitor gains clerics you control cost black, white, less to cast. What? Okay, that's soulbound, Bushido 2. And if it's paired with another creature, each of those creatures has ward 2 and gets plus one plus one for each creature paired with it. Isn't it just one? You can't soulbound with like with more than one creature. So that's like pretty redundant. They just get plus one plus one. And if the paired creature is a cleric, the janitor gains clerics you control cost black white. Okay, so if I if I uh soulbound with like a soul sister, then all my clerics get a white uh cost white black less to cast. It's a lot of work, but uh, I get it. Okay, next up. All's fair from Baking Catbug. I don't know why it's called all uh, apostrophe S fair. White, white, one generic enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, you can you can pay X, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Huh? If you do draw a card? What? What's the, what? What is going on here? If an opponent 
drew more cards than they're supposed to. I can pay X, where X is the number of cards I've drawn this turn. But I haven't drawn anything this turn. This is the this is the the fair of all. All's fair in love and war. The first one you draw is free. If you do draw a card. So you pay zero for the first card? I don't get it. If an opponent draws, so if they drew too many cards, you can pay X, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn. So I pay zero for zero cards, then I pay one. I can but I've never drawn a card. So you pay zero, then one. No, you, I can never get to one because I haven't drawn anything yet. Isn't that the way it is? So you, you, you may pay X, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn. If you do, oh, I see. If I pay zero, I draw a card. Then I pay one and I draw, oh, I see. Okay, I got it. So if you draw extra cards, I pay zero, I, I draw a card. If you, then I may pay one to draw another card, then two, then three. Okay, this card's broken. I mean, what it comes down to, I guess what it says is like, don't draw cards. Otherwise I'll draw like a boatload of them. As long as I have, I have any mana on the battlefield. Yeah, you draw a card, it's not draw X, so you pay X first. It's an interestingly designed card. So what it comes down to is you play all's fair and then everyone's like, don't be drawing cards or uh, my hand is busted. And then if that is the case, you have to only draw cards when the all's fair player is tapped out, I guess. Bing Cupbug says it's fair. I don't think it's fair. I think it's very unfair, actually. I mean, it's fair so long as no one's drawing extra cards while you have men untapped. <laughs> this seems fair in my opinion, hardest to work with than something like Notion Thief. The only problem is you can force your opponent to draw cards. There are a lot of cards that's like everyone must draw a card. And once they drew, drew a card, it's over! All's fair is now not going to be fair. In fact, I'm going to draw a bunch of, a boatload of cards. But Consecrated Sphinx is double cards for double cost and no extra mana. Yeah, no extra mana. I don't know. I don't know how to compare it. Remember, Consecrated Sphinx is super clunky. In 1v1, it's probably fine. Probably. Okay, whatever. We'll give it a pass. It's a good thought experiment, that's for sure. Okay, who have we not? I don't think we saw anything from Sur Surefire Selves. MTG. Carmen Blade Outlaw. We got, it is a black, black, one generic, one, two human rogue with first strike and death touch. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Carmen Blade Outlaw dies, you get an experience counter. Whenever Carmen deals combat damage to a player, they lose X life, where X is the number of experience counters you have. First strike and death touch for three mana. Whenever a creature by Carmen dies, you get an experience counter. How does this creature live in combat though? Almost everything kills Carmen. Or is it Carmen or Carmine? Trying to make uh, cards with fewer attacks. I love you for that. Oh my God, Surefire Cells. You are my number, I am your number one best fan. Good God. Some of these cards, the mo if I have to get this close to the screen, there's something wrong with your card design or you have to remove flavor text or something. Uh, whenever Carmine deals combat damage to a player, they lose X life or X is the number of experience counters you have. Okay, so if you somehow win in combat versus a lot of creatures, I like it. It actually is super flavorful, super fair. And she'll find you. Doesn't matter where you are. You think you can hide? Carmine has skills, special skills that will be that will eat you up. Yeah, and you can chew in 3D exactly. Yeah, less, exactly. Less is more with cards. I should have a rule like that. Less is more. And then we got like a Madra will just jam as many cards. Madra is not, it's like at that breaking point. There's like a line of like too much. And Madra goes just a little bit beyond the line. Not too much that it annoys me. But then when the text gets super small, those, those ones, 
You gotta reconsider your you gotta reconsider the cards you've designed, in my opinion. Okay, uh next up, let's take a look. Another bacon. It's basically every second one's gonna be a bacon cap bug card. Armadillo Umbra. Another Umbra card. Armadillo Umbra! Three ma so is this supposed to be a, like a, the sequel to the Armadillo Cloak? Three mana. Oh, you can flash it in for five mana. You see that coming? Uh, enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus two. Lifelink and trample. And it's got Umbra, uh, umbra armor. You're just upgrading a bunch of cards. Which is totally fine, by the way. <laughs> I'm not talking. <laughs> I got mentioned anyway. <laughs> That's right. We love you, Majra. We love you. We love you anyway. Uh, are there typos in here? I didn't catch it. You're supposed to do an um, trample, umbra armor. Don't know, armadillo. Oh, look, look at that cute little armadillo. Is this like a Lanwar elf or something? All right, little armadillo, it's time to release you onto the world. You be free, armadillo. That's just a normal card. Hey, th these cards can be normal, by the way. I didn't say that you had to make inc incredibly unique, convoluted, new, imaginative, ca imaginative cards. Okay, next up from uh, Brawly Shadow, Ango Nightmare Dragon. Oh, the art is a 10 out of 10. Okay, we have a black, blue, two generic, Angro Nightmare Dragon. So three, three, inca another incarnation. Dragon Noble. Okay, now I get it. You're making all the incarnation creatures around here. Flying. Enters the battlefield. Create a token that's a copy of Target Saga. Sagas you control have pay to remove a lore counter from this permanent. Activate only it. Oh, that's a sorcery. Really? So we can perpetually keep the sagas around? I think this card is going to zyber for a lot of people. Those people out there, they love their sagas like other people love equipment. And other people like auras. It's almost like a dragon. Well, it is a dragon. It's an incarnation dragon noble. Read the fine print around here. The only five-point font, or like two-point two font that Brawly Shadow makes is in the uh, uh, creature type area. Yeah, talk about a never-ending story, yeah. Or the Final Fantasy, if you know what I mean. The Final Fantasy. All right, next up, let's take a look at... Okay, let's look at another Ma a Madra special around here. Last three cards of the Wasteland. Oh, the Rabbit Saga hasn't... We haven't finished that one. Um, the, is it called the last three cards? Of the Wasteland? No, it's not. Okay, hold on, I'm just gonna look up Wastelands. What part was it? Part five? Part seven? Okay, I think it's part seven. I think that's your last part that you submitted. Um, so you said the three cards. Nurse of the Wastelands. This is 10 out of 10, incredibly cute. This is the cutest card I'm- this is probably the cutest art I'm gonna see all day. Uh, okay, it is a white, 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 three, three, it's a rabbit. It's got- it's got flash. It's got lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, choose one or more. Regenerate target rabbit, then gain two life. Uh, regenerate target rogue, then gain two life. Or regenerate target mercenary and gain two life. Oh, that's strange. You uh, gain two life for everything. And regenerate. It's actually a completely, brutally fair card. 100% pass. Love everything about it. Okay, we got... Oh, God. Nightmare of the Wastelands. Black, black, black. 2-2 two, two Rabbit Horror with Wither. Whenever an opponent discards one or more cards or sacrifice one or more permanents, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nightmare of the Wasteland. So you sacrifice anything or discard, this thing gets bigger. Whenever a creature dies by anything other than lethal damage, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Gonna wither them away. And last up, we got Brawler of the Wastelands. Red, red, red for a 3-3 three, three. rabbit rogue mercenary. With first strike, whenever three or more mercenaries deals combat damage, 
uh, to a player for the first time each turn, you get an extra combat phase after this one. What? Whenever three or more mercenaries? So it's only the first time, though. So you get an extra combat. You know what? This might actually be fine. Uh, first off, most mercenaries sort of suck. Uh, they they need to be buffed up by quite a bit. You have to get... Th they all three need to deal combat damage to a player. And for the first time each turn. So it actually might be fair. I take it back. That's a totally fair card. Alright, next up. Let's take one from... Kalonsis, the dragon. Ascendant Ojutai. Ascendant, Dragon Ascendant. Oh, did you post this thing on Reddit? Oh, hold on, is, or is it because of the comma? Hold on. No. I think I gotta look up on Reddit. Are you on Reddit, Col uh, Colonsis? Is that what you're doing around here? We stopped posting things on Reddit years ago. And by years, I mean months ago. Dragon Ascendant. I can't find it here. Or did you po did you give it a name? I don't see it anywhere. Did you just post it? Dragon Ascendant. I can't find this card. I don't think it's there. Probably on Cardsmith. The rule, you gotta post it in my Discord. Like, uh, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look over the entire internet for your card, you know. So if you post it in my Discord, we- you can share it with us. Um, some people put it on Reddit because they don't have access to my Discord, but like, that's how- that's how that works- works around here. No, I'm not gonna Google and sniff around the rest of the internet for your card. So I'll tell you what, for your donation, we will donate it back to the main page, and if you, uh, if you can- well, it's in the instructions. So go, check out the description, and then if you post it, let me know and we'll take a look at it. But if that never happens, this person who submitted Cease will be super happy about you. All right, we have uh, for Rakdos, Rakdos, it's an instant. Choose a creature, exile it. Isn't this just, oh, it gets around targeting, I see. So instead of like, count, instead of exile target creatures, just choose a creature and it's exiled. Exile in black? That's something they do. Is that even something red does? I don't know. Did you get, did you get sniped? Oh, this is your card. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bacon Catbug's card. It's gonna be the fourth time in uh, uh, Mag uh, sorry, Coffin MTG Live, where the user snipes themselves by accident. You know, why are you super chatting your own card? Oh, I see. So you waited for me to go through the freebie section to see what what was gonna get mentioned, and then when this we didn't get that when when we didn't get far enough, then you like super chatted your own card. Okay. Well, in that case. Where's where's this card? This is called Cease. Looking for the Cease. Okay, here's the Cease one. My prediction on the MH4 Riff of Terminate. So for that super chat, we'll look at another freebie card. Jove, uh, Arcane Braggart. This is a four mana, two three elf rogue. Not even in any of the elf colors. It's a red blue elf that's weird it's i guess it's that's why it's rogue then for an is it one generic tap wager with an opponent that is gambling if you win copy target instant or sorcery spell they control you may choose new targets for the copy what do you mean wager so each wagering player draws a card then discards a card a player wins if they discarded the card with the highest mana value if you build your deck with around a really expensive card this can be super easy Okay, next super chat. Let's take a look at... We just saw a bunch of Bacon Catbug cards. So we'll take another one from uh, Brawly Shadow. Mariko Snow Empress. I like the sound of this one. Ah! This looks like... This actually looks something weird out of, like, Spirited Away or something. 
Okay, we have a black, blue, white, 2 2 incarnation noble, death touch, lifelink. When Mariko attacks, you may sacrifice a permanent. If you do, put a counter, a plus one plus one counter on Mariko. If the sacked permanent was a snow permanent, put a, an additional plus one plus one counter on Mariko. 100% fair, 100% fine. It's a mythic. Probably could just be a rare. Okay, we got word that Colonsus has added their card to the Discord. The Discord, so. It's got to be in custom MTG cards. I have no idea where you put this thing. Did you put in custom MTG cards? We have a very specific uh, place for custom cards. It's right here. Look, Henrik's saying hi, YouTube here. Did you put in the coffee crew chat? No, it's not here either. I don't think I have to refresh. We're looking at... Oh, this is it. <laughs> You're look. It's, it's right in front of you. Yeah, it's literally right there. Stop scrolling. I couldn't even scroll further. I couldn't go anywhere. Okay, Dragon Ascendant Ojutai. What the hell mana cost is this? What an abomination. Okay, we got Orzov, Selesnya, Demir, Simic, and three generic for a 5-5 Elder Dragon Avatar. This is like the buffed up version of uh, Ojutai. Flying Flash Vigilance. If a source would deal damage to a player or permanent, prevent uh, all but one of that damage. So basically, everything's indestructible, effectively, or it can't die through combat damage, or any sort of damage. Uh, if a player would cast a spell from exile, counter that spell unless the player pays three. It's actually quite fine. For seven, for seven mana, I wish you would get all this. They should give us more stuff for seven mana, in my opinion. You know, for some reason, I was looking for his name, but I couldn't find it. It was just... I was blind. You know, I'm, not, I'm really not going to defend myself around here. Okay, next up. Um, Bacon Catbug's Mirage Outpost. What Super Chai give you? Give you this one. Mirage Outpost, a legendary land. You may play this land from outside the game, but by- WHAT?! By exiling a basic land card you own from outside the game? What the hell cost is that?! That's like the worst cost- like, let me use a resource that doesn't exist in the game at all from the game. It wasn't even in the game in the first place. Okay, uh, if I'm reading that correctly, minus one sideboard slot? Oh, come on. It, it, doesn't it reset at the end of the game? Mirage Outpost enters tapped unless you control fewer lands than each opponent. Add a colorless mana. I don't understand this. So basically, you always have a land is what you're telling me. You're telling me this card is in my sideboard. I get to play it. It's way stronger than you think. Yeah, it's free. Well, it's not completely free real estate. Okay, I would... F okay, so I actually think it's broken. I like the idea, but you should have... You have to discard a card from your hand. I think that would make this card fair. Or I don't know, maybe... Or exile a card from your hand. That would probably make it fair. Minus one sideboard slot, sure. Uh, but you can also just play an addition to your hand. It's like the OG... Yeah, it's like an... I think it's fine to have a colorless land. I like this idea that you at least... You always have a land drop and it's colorless. But you can't have it replace. The cost can't be like removing a card that's not even affecting the game. So I think if you exile, um, I think if you exile a card from your hand, this card actually is fine. Broken in Commander? I don't even know if it's that broken in. Well, I mean, if, if uh, it's unplayable. No, no. Outside the game means your entire, like your entire, yeah, millions of binders of cards, your entire collection. No, there's no sideboards, but when it says from outside the game in Commander, it means your entire collection. I don't, well, I don't know if that's legal. It's entirely legal in Commander, though. Yeah, let chaos ensue. Okay, uh, as worded, uh, broken. Completely broke. Completely broken in half. Uh, next up. Uh, oh, we did this Mao Tu veteran. Let's take from this person, Dark Alice. Uh, the Foul Fairy Tale. Everyone's making Alice cards today. We got Dark Alice. 
Is this, is this Brawly Shadows, like, extra account or something? This seems like a very Brawly's Shadow looking and named card. Okay, we have a Black Black 3 Generic, 3-3 three, three Nightmare, Suspend 3 for a Black Black. It's got Threshold. Gets plus 2, plus 2, Haste, and Tap, Dark Alice, Fights, Target Creature, You Don't Control. Um, That is actually really strong, but it's a 5 mana creature, so whatever. When a Dark Alice dies, exile it with two time counters on it, and it gains suspend. Whenever another colorless non-land permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if Dark Alice is suspended, remove a time counter from it. I don't know if the remove time counter is necessary whenever another colorless non-land permanent enters the battlefield. So if you play, Ar you can pay it for like two mana, then play like Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, then you'll have this available by like turn, like super fast, really. Oh, it's from Shadowverse? Another Shadowverse card. Well, we can get Brawly Shadow to confirm. Brawly Shadow knows everything. Brawly Shadow says no comment. Is this the is this Brawly Shadow's extra account? Could be. Trying to get through the 15 card per day roll. Um, I'm jumping around the super chat, so I don't know if yours was done yet or not. I will get through all the super chats today though. I think it's mostly fair. I don't know about this last ability where you can play colorless cards and reduce the suspend counters on it. May probably that's fair too. I guess you have to be like a mono black artifact deck to make this thing work. Work effectively. Okay, uh, next let's go to Luke. Garfield and El uh, Elza. I don't think I have any mistakes this time, hopefully. Garfield and Elza. We got two cards here. Uh, it starts with Garfield, the Sanctuary Shield, a red, green, two generic, four, four human beast with trample. Uh, when Garfield, the Sanctuary Shield, enters the battlefield, put a shield counter on each creature you control. And when the shield counter is removed from a creature you control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Garfield. That's totally fine. That's totally cool. So basically, I don't know what the flavor is here. So as other creatures lose their shield, I guess Garfield picks them up and gets the shields. Lasagna tokens win. I am, I do not know the reference at all. Then we have Elza, the Gut Hunter. A four mana, three, two, vampire assassin. First strike, pay a black, regenerate Elza, the Gut Hunter. And when Elza, the Gut Hunter, enters the battlefield, it fights target creature. Uh, whenever a creature dealt damage by Elza, the Gut Hunter dies. Okay, the only mistake you have is <laughs> the card is bleeding in underneath the stamp. The Gut Hunter. Uh, so whenever a creature dealt damage by Elza, the Gut Hunter dies, you gain three life. Uh, that is totally fair and fine. Do you want to build a lasagna? What the hell? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand these references. Next up. Let's take one from David. Dak Faden, most wanted. Just look up most wanted. There it is. Okay, Dak Faden, most wanted. Most wanted? Police are looking for him. Okay, it's a red, blue. He is a thief. He's like the most... What is, that is so weird. That's like being the most notorious cheater uh, in Magic the Gathering tournaments, just walking around and playing in them. Like, why isn't Dak Faden behind bars? Greatest thief in the multiverse, huh? Why are you scot-free? Everyone knows you're a thief. Okay, one loyalty. Us, I don't think I've seen that on a single Planeswalker before, honestly. It's got Disguise for 5 mana. As Dak Faden has turned, five up, uh, turned face up, put 5 loyalty counters on him. You may activate one of his loyalty abilities. You still pay its costs. I don't understand the Disguise part. Pay 1. Tap. Uh, sorry. Plus 1. Tap up to 1 target non-land permanent. Fair. Minus 2. Target... Target non-land permanence controller turns it face down. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, do we disguise things? That's how it works? Minus 7. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for up to two permanent cards. Put them onto the battlefield under your control, then shuffle the library. Honestly, that's underwhelming, uh, to be frankly obvious. 
You literally have to tick this up six times and hope it doesn't get punched once to pull this thing off. This ultimate should actually be stronger. Oh, disguised as a new mechanic, similar to morph. Cool. Dies when you flip it. Well, it depends what you flip, right? Just morph since it doesn't have ward two. It's better than Tybalt, I guess. Yeah, it's better than Tybalt. Target non-land permits controller turns it face down. This this is incredibly fair. In fact, it could be pushed a lot more. Yeah, you can have it. You can have it tomorrow. Next up. Bacon cat bug. Nocturne Scourge. The Scourge! Oh, it looks like a devil of some sort. It is a demon horror for two mana. It's a 2-2 with death touch. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles that many cards from the top of their library face down. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Madness takes form a silent predator uh, hunting in the shadows depths. But everyone around here is trying to create either something, you know, trying to create something completely busted. Bacon Catbug just trying to show their resume to Wizards of the Coast. Like, hey, look, I can make some reasonably designed cards. These all could see real play. Hire me. I need a. I need this R and D job. I've always wanted to work for Wizards of the Coast. Oh wait a minute! You actually screwed up that land card, the companion land. I take it back. Your reputation has been ruined. You have to redeem yourself with more scourge, scourge-like cards. Okay. Now, next up, let's take a look at. Um, Oh yeah, Majra has more cards. And now for part two of the Lalovesque. Oh, you, that's correct. The wolf place. Lalovesque. I'm just gonna go to the post. Time for wolfies. Okay, we got uh, Gruel White for a apprentice of Lalovesque. Uh, two, two wolf warrior with training. Apprentice of Lalovesque gets plus one, plus one and has lifelink as long as it's modified. When apprentice of Lalovesque dies, you may return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with enchant creature and gains enchant creature gains plus two, plus two and trample. So when it dies, you can return. <laughs> so basically you, you people are making so many cards. It would, if it were to die, it don't die. And in this case, when it dies, you bring it back to the battlefield and it's an aura. At least it's like, yeah, so it's like, it sort of reminds me of, what's it called, um, Disturb? Yeah, so if something dies, at least at a cost. In this case, it has no cost, but I think it's okay. It's not the most pushed card in the world. Brutal Gardener of Lalavesque. Uh, three mana, three, two, Wolf Peasant. Uh, Haste, Brutal Gardener of Lalavesque gets plus one, plus one, has double strike as long as it's modified. What does it mean to be modified? Like if it has a counter on it? I can't remember what a modified creature is in magic. Because that could be the difference between really broken and not. Uh, Brutal Gardener, when it dies, it comes back as an aura enchantment with whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player creates. <laughs> A food token what a weird ability honestly I think if it's gonna come back as an aura it should just get the original ability I think it's weird that it comes back as something but it does something completely different so it just it just feels weird as a card that you just give it this arbitrarily completely different ability I mean it makes sense it's a gardener it makes food or whatever equipped or enchanted is modified okay Gotcha. Uh, Leyline Keeper. Two mana, two, two. Gets plus one, plus one, and trample as long as it's modified. When it dies, return to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with uh, enchant land you control and gains whenever this land is tapped for mana. Control Its controller adds an additional one mana of any color. Very fair card. Most fair card I've seen all day. From Majra. <laughs> it's Master Blacksmith of Lalavesque. Another two mana. More Grizzly Bears. Wolf Warrior with Mentor gains plus one plus one and trample as long as it's modified. And when it dies, return it to the battlefield. It's an aura with Enchant Creature, and Enchant Creature gets plus two plus two and first strike. So like the weird, it it would make just 
more flavor sense if these the first ability was the same as this one it's like if it's gonna come back as an aura then you get it for what it used to do like that just makes more sense to me flavor wise otherwise i mean it's still fine and then we get uh, Protector of Lalavesque, the three mana, three, two wolf warrior. Gains plus one, plus one, and first strike as long as it's modified. When it dies, it may come back as an aura with enchant creature and gives plus three, plus two, and life length and an and umbra armor. That's pretty pushed. I guess it's okay. That one, uh, that one actually might be a little broken. It's a three mana, three, two, and it dies and makes things very strong. I'm assuming with umbra armor, you mean totem armor. Uh, okay, next up, let's take a look at how many bacon cat bugs are there. Okay, let's take a look at one. Who hasn't got a card yet? I think Gabrielle's got a card yet. Verg Avesta. By the way, I'm going to get to everybody. I'm just trying to spread the love around so they don't have to wait to the very end for their cards. Avesta. Verg Avesta is a black, 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 two generic sorcery. Target opponent loses life equal to the amount of life you have lost this turn. That could be broken. Like, hold on. You could pay. You could play Necropotence, pay 39 life, and then dome everyone for, like, that much damage. How close to death must one find itself for their own wounds to be fatal to their opponents? And then there are, of course, cards that are like... Okay, if I lost, if an opponent loses that much life, I gain that much life. Or if I lose life, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's, like, some really good ways to, like, break this card. Especially with the cards, like, uh, okay, see you later, Toads. Especially with cards that are, like, pay whatever amount of life you want. Go for it. And then just sink it into this Virga Vesta card. Uh, okay, next up, we'll take a look at... Uh, Opportunity Drive, Lupine Shrine. Lupine Shrine is a green, green, two generic shrine. It's a legendary artifact. Pay green tap. Wolf and werewolf creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. Wolf and werewolf creature spells have squad two. You hear that, Majra? This would go great in your Lulavesque deck. The whole thing that you're trying to build around here. Okay, Bacon Cat Bugs, Dats Parade. Actually, I also think old wolf players would love this thing. Okay, Death Parade. Black, black, two generic instant. Choose creatures you don't control one at a time until each creature you don't control has been chosen. Each of those creatures gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each creature chosen before it. What? Okay, choose creatures. Oh god, this, car this card is going to make my brain hurt. So choose creatures you don't control one at a time. Then each of those creatures gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each creature chosen before it. So will that not theoretically kill everything? Maybe not. Maybe some stuff would live. Because if something has like minus one, mi sorry, one toughness, then four toughness, then some of those four toughness creatures are going to live around here. It's interesting, I guess. The first creature chosen gets minus zero, minus zero. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Sure. It's a unique, I guess. You need to save the la the later choices for the most dangerous creatures. Well, you also have to make sure that you can just kill anything at all with the later choices. Uh, next up. We'll take one. Oh, here. Let's take from Zarthur. Here's... Hey, there's time for more. Kate's Detective Crew. Kate's Detective... Where's Kate's Detective Crew? Oh, yeah, here, the whole thing. There's time for more. All right, let's take a look at this entire series, Arthur. Station Archivist is a blue-white, one generic, one three human detective. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal any number of those cards and put them on the bottom of your library in any order. If you do, investigate that many times. What? Put the rest on the top of your library in any order? Oh, I see. So it enters the battlefield. You look at the top three cards. For all the cards you put on the bottom, you investigate. That actually seems insane. 
But it's a 1-3 creature, so it can't be that busted. And then you it's like a weird ponder. Or it's a weird... Yeah, it's like a weird ponder in, in some sense. Next up. Sting Officer, a blue 1-1 one, one human detective with Skulk. And whenever Sting Officer deals combat damage to a player, if you control a clue, you may sacrifice it to draw a card. Then discard a card. If you don't control one, investigate instead. Who are we investigating anyway? This is like a detective deck of some sort. Justice Rider, a three mana three, two human plot detective with flash. When air is the battlefield, investigate for each time target opponent has committed a crime this turn. You target me? You've committed a crime. You're not even allowed to look at me in, in Thunder Junction. <laughs> it's like, if you point at someone in Thunder Junction, that's a crime. You'll be arrested for pointing at someone, because you're targeting them. Toilet Duck says, fun thing to do, use this with play cards from the bottom of your library cards. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, plant the right stuff right at the bottom of your library. You'll submit them big time. You've committed a crime around here. Totally fair. And insightful investigator. Is this like a Sherlock Holmes style set? White one generic, two two human detective. When insightful investigator enters enters the battlefield, I'm guessing, investigate. Did they remove the enters the battlefield? I feel like I've seen some cards getting shorthanded now. The first time you sacrifice a clue each turn, surveil two. Wow, clues are a huge resource. You you, you get your, um, these, when you investigate, you get the clues. The clues can be used to loot cards. They can also be used to surveil the top two cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest are on the top of your library in any order. Okay, cool. All very cool cards. It's enters now. Oh, yeah, enters the battlefield don't make no sense anymore. All right. And I thought you guys were just getting lazy by, with, with your wording. That's all. I take it back. Bacon Catbugs, spell weave Umbra. You just have, you have something for the Umbras these days. Spell weave Umbra. Bringing Umbras back. Okay, Selesnia, Selesnia, enchantment. Auras you control have Umbra armor. Uh, that's it. I guess they have Umbra, uh, Umbra armor. Isn't it totem armor? Did you, like, misspell all of these? I think it's totem armor. Uh, if enchanted permanent would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy that aura. Exactly. A shield of woven light guarded against the darkest shadows. I'm trying to bring the auras back. Okay, Majra. Run away in the night. Run away in the night. And the reminder text for Snare is, during your turn, you may cast this card face down as an artifact for two. Turn it face up any uh, time on a later turn for its snare cost. Oh, God. I don't even want to know what's going to happen here. Oh, it's just one card? So what you're telling me is there wasn't even enough space on this card for what you wanted to do. Okay, four mana. Snare. Snare for black and a white. And I guess snare means uh, during your turn, you can cast this card face down as an artifact for two so it's like more it's like morph turn it face up anytime for its uh for its snare cost which is two mana when runaway of the night enters or is turned face up exile target creature or planeswalker uh each player gains life equal to the target targets mana value and investigates and investigates sacrifice run away sacrifice run away in the night i guess that's fine it's actually it's, it's a really complicated way to Remove creatures and planeswalkers. It's really convoluted, really. And there's a it's four mana exile something. You got it. What happens to the previous janitor? Only the knight knows. Headmaster Belfigor. Where where'd our janitor go? Brawly's shadow. With arcane phantom copycat. Sorry, it's not arcane. It's a cane. A cane phantom copycat. God, I love this art. We have a, uh, reminds me of Tuxedo Mask. It's a red, black, three generic, four, four, incarnation noble. 
From now on, if I ever see an incarnation, I'm just going to assume it was made by or designed by Brawly Shadow. They changed it to Umbra Armor. Oh! That's not socially acceptable to call it. That's right to call it Totem Armor. All right. All Totem Armor is now Umbra Armor. Thank you for letting me know. I don't play with Umbra Armor. I don't know. I'm not up to date on the erratas to these things. Okay, we got, uh, okay, it's a ward. Sacrifice a creature. That's really hard to pay sometimes. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of up to one target creature an opponent controls, except it has haste, and sacrifice this creature at end of combat. Completely fair. Also interesting. So it's like, it's like a weird take on, you know, stealing their creature and attacking with it, except you're not stealing anything, you're just making a copy of it. Anything you can do, I can do better. The Phantom Copycat. So it's all magic, people. It's magic. Incarnation made the most sense since they are manifestations of the mind. You know better than me. I am not a flavor judge. A, f a full... Full, uh... How do I put it? Um... Just letting everyone know I'm not a flavor judge. <laughs> okay, uh... Surefire Selves. Conjured... Dominion, can we fix Epic Boys? We'll see in a second. Conjured Dominion. Oh, is Epic Boys like an AI generated card or something? Okay, seven mana, legendary enchantment. Whenever you sacrifice Conjured Dominion, and at the beginning of each end step, choose a player. Search that player's library for a permanent card and put that card onto the battlefield under your control. Then that player shuffles their library. And it's Fable? As long as this permanent is on the battlefield, whenever you cast a spell, sacrifice this permanent. So this thing's on the battlefield. I can sacrifice it when I cast a spell. And whenever I sacrifice Conjured Dominion, and at the beginning of each end step, Oh, so, okay, so at the beginning of each end step, I get this ability, and then the moment they someone forces me to cast something, I can sacrifice it. Yeah, search so that player's library for a permanent card, put that onto the battlefield under your control, then that player uh, shuffles their library. I guess this is okay? It's probably strong, but is that... Oh, no, it's at the beginning of each end step, choose a player. Good God, this is a hot commander card. Yeah, you're just gonna get, like, the biggest thing from everybody's deck. Like, seven mana, pass. Okay, I take your thing. Oh, next turn, I get another thing. It'd probably be fair. It's probably fair if you get to choose only one card a turn. Like, on your turn, at the beginning of, like, your end step, you choose a player. But if it's every turn, that's, like, four, four of the best cards every single turn. Search that player's library. Yeah, so you can search your, li your library for the best card. Search your opponent's library for the next card. Everyone's best cards. Oh, it's clever. They effectively should have made it like that. Yes. Maybe it should just be your answer. I don't even know what the original card was. What was this card called? Something Boys? The Boys. Welcome, Binovsky. It's called Eternal Dominion. Hold on. Eternal Dominion. This is a real card. Okay, hold on. Let's take a look at the real card. I guess what it was made off of. Search target player's library for an artifact creature, enchantment, or land card. Put that card into play under your control. That player shuffles their library. So you only get this once a turn. This was fair. And I think the way that this card, this new card has been designed is just... I think it's busted. No, the epic mechanic? Well, no, the epic mechanic is doesn't... I don't think it makes it that broken, the epic mechanic. Like, the epic mechanic says you can't play cards anymore. But you only get, you only get like, once per turn. Like, on your turn. Right? I think that's how it works. <laughs> Hot take, the epic keyword is an epic fail. Yeah, it was nothing epic about that. Anyway, I don't know if this is good or bad. We need comments in the comments section below to confirm... Where this card was a uh, fail or not. Uh, I'm actually... Do you know what? I'm going to say it's a fail. I think it's a bit strong. 
I, I can just imagine you getting this thing out on turn four and then just completely taking over the I would just never play anything I would just like okay pass the turn get a huge thing pass the turn get another huge thing pass the turn get like and I can get any card any permanent I want anything I want so I think it's completely broken uh okay next up we've got bacon cat bugs Scur day metamorphosis this is a black green one generic instant target creature loses all abilities and becomes a one one green squirrel okay that's fair and also sacrifice a creature. Create X11 one, one, uh, green squirrel creature tokens, where X is the sacrifice creature's power. I don't know what the first ability has anything to do with Golgari. Target creature loses all abilities and becomes a 1-1 one, one green squirrel. Makes no sense to me what why green or black would have this ability. Uh, but flavor aside, I like it. It looks good. Okay, we got okay, we have some defenders of epic around here. Ratsa says epic is the best keyword ever, and I will die on this hill. I have yet to play my EDH deck that runs all five of epic sorceries, preferably at the same time. It works with the squirrel commander guy, probably. Truefile says also probably. Okay, next up. Okay, hold on. Madra says, the comment I wanted to do in the previous super chat, I swear that I have only 11 decks to show. Hold on, is this something to look up? I don't know. I'll take a look at it. I swear that I only have 11 decks to show. Swear I. Well, I'll just put I swear. No, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat, Madra. So, with that, I'll give it to the freebie section. Back to the freebie section. Maybe Bacon Cat Bug will get sniped again. Uh, untap, upkeep, drink. Green, Simic, and a blue for an enchantment. Commutative upkeep, take a shot. That is insane. Uh, that actually is super insane. You're going to get drunk real fast. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a number of drunk counters on target creature equal to the number of age counters on untap, upkeep, drink. Uh, creatures with drunk counters on them get minus one plus one for each drunk counter and must block each combat if able. A greasy burger would hit the spot right about now. Sure. Probably not enough. Oh, and probably not enough word space in the last super chat. Thank you very much. It hit danger for your in real life life toll. Yeah. It's <laughs> exactly what it do. Uh, okay, next up. Uh, what's our next super chat? Take one from Brawly Shadow for the copy token. That's with uh, Akane. Oh no! I'm so sorry, actually. No, I was supposed to get that copy token. You did not need to uh, super chat this. No, you had to just remind me. Yeah, there's a copycat token. And to help make up for me being a cheapskate, you were not a cheapskate at all. Uh, and for that, we will donate that to the freebie section. But yeah, here. Uh, just a reminder, this was Arcane, who copied creatures. And you had to sack them at end of turn in the form of a token. And then, uh, there's the copy token. I don't know why you have a copy token, though. It's just a copy of another creature, right? Okay, we got a copy token. Okay, we'll donate that one, though. Donate that super chat. Beam of Light! It's a white-white sorcery. Destroy target tapped creature. That's right, blow it up. It's got Spell Morph. That... Okay, that's design space that hasn't been touched yet, I think. You may cast this card face down as a 2-2 creature for 3. Cast any time for its spell morph cost. The spell morph. Okay, bacon cat bug. Sylvanix. Uh, whatever that is. Sometimes the AI just gives you gold. Syl... Are these all AI-generated cards or something? You're telling me you don't make your own real cards? Or are you just, uh, or are you building cards based around random weird AI art? Okay, we have green, green, red, red, two generic for a 5-5 five, five squirrel dragon. What? Who would win? A million squirrels a dragon versus a dragon or a million squirrels combined into a dragon? 
I just imagine this is like just a bunch of squirrels combined to form the image of a dragon. Flying. When Sylvanex the uh, destroyer attacks, create X11 green squirrel creature tokens with menace that are tapped and attacking, where X is the number of creatures defending player controls. Exile those tokens at end of combat. This is very. It's giving me a lot of. Um, mere battle sphere vibes. Very mere battle sphere. Oh my god, squirrels with menace! Or are they menacing? And Henrik, the unmatched! He's back from the AI shows. I don't remember this card. Okay, it's another one loyalty planeswalker, this time for a Demir mana. It's not Jace, it's Jage. And for plus one, sacrifice a non-token permanent. Pay zero, each player loses one life. Point. Sacrifice a non-token permit. What for nothing? Minus one. Return target creature to its owner's hand. So for one. So oh, this is interesting. So it's basically an unsummon that it can leave on the battlefield. Actually, it's that's a very interesting design. So it's unsummon at the very worst in black as well, which is weird. Um, but I can also put it on the battlefield and make and just drain everybody for a singular life point at each turn. <laughs> Jace has a cousin. Yeah. The dark cousin. Jage. Oh no. It's my lost third cousin, Jage. And of course, you could sacrifice a non token permanent, like a land or something, I guess, to build counters on this thing. I think this is a great design. I don't even think you can break this. It's weird to be able to have a mono black unsummon. It also, yeah, it is weird. It's also weird to have mono blue uh, bounce. Maybe these could be, like, maybe it could be changed in a bit so that you can um, get rid of the lose life ability, give it a more blue ability, and then make an alternate black one that doesn't have the bounce ability, has something else. Careful, if you plus one in turn one, you lose a land. Yeah, yeah, so it's fair. It's completely fair. I would just play it turn one, ping you for one, and like, that's a, like against a control deck? This card's insane. Like, what are they gonna do about this card? Turn one, ping you for one. Then next turn, two, three, four, five. It's like one mana guaranteed to do five damage. Unless they wanna remove it. So it's gonna be at least a lightning bolt. I think Burn would also play this card. Now they think that this is starting to get broken. So, burn, like, Black Burn would play this card. Red Black. They would just play this turn one and start pinging you. I mean, maybe it's not that good. Okay, it's not good versus creature decks. Because they'll just kill it off. Yeah, the zero is insane. Maybe it should have been also a minus one. But then, it, then it, if it was a minus one, this card's completely unplayable. It's each player, so you damage yourself as well. Oh, no! That could never, that, that is completely fair. Yeah. It's interesting. I think I'm going to give it a pass, even though it's a, the colors are a bit, like, weirdly warped. We got around two hours again! When is this show ever going to be less than two hours? It's probably never going to happen for forever. But that's okay, because we love our custom MTG cards, don't we, chat? If you want to be part of the show, you got to be here 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks, everyone, for supporting the show. If you're a patron on Pem a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show. And sometimes you super chat some random things and other people can be part of the show. And, of course, we have to thank the coffee crew for being here this morning. Most important, we got to thank Madra, Bacon, Kappa, the single largest donators on this show completely. Corvinuk, Henrik, Erland, uh, Brawly Shadow also up there. Your uh, surefire selves, uh, Steve Cooper, Carlo, and many more because you guys are the crew. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next cup.